Answers with Ethan and Lou on I-95. Hey, Mark. All right. Morning. So we haven't... What, we what, have, you, what are you doing? Well, yeah, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> He's coming to us. Tough. <laughs> We have not What's spoken. Up, boys? All right, we, well, let's catch up. We have not spoken three to weeks, you in, yeah, in like three oh. weeks, and uh, since we have last spoken to you, you lost the primary to uh, something called Stefanowski. Some guy, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we. Well, it was an interesting, uh, interesting campaign, right? So uh, you know, you put two years of your life into it, and some guy wins. <laughs> <laughs> not bitter though. I don't, I don't know who this guy is. Who is this guy? He's some guy. I don't know. I'm on the team. All right, so you're endorsing him? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see we could be grown-ups about That's this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, Ethan and I both saw firsthand, uh, personally, how much work you you did put into this thing and, and sure. your passion. And, and, and uh, you know, from a personal standpoint, we were both... Uh, obviously rooting for you because we believed in what you were saying. So uh, I, I got to tell you, you worked hard, and uh, I feel bad. I feel bad for you. Well, our downfall was that fundraiser where you really came in and bombed. <laughs> Every um, single guy, time this guy is killing me with this. <laughs> you are killing it just hurt, me. It just put it yeah. for everything. You know what I mean? It was such a rally killer. Have you ever yeah. seen but... my stand-up act <laughs> when I used to do it? Have you, did you ever get a chance to he- did you ever hear about it? It was. I don't think it ever did stand up as far as I'm concerned. It was terribly <laughs> offensive. I did you a favor by showing up and saying nothing. And drinking two complimentary No, you sat at the bar and you kept texting me. Can I go now? Can I go now? I go, no, you're a host. <laughs> All right, listen. It's next time, fault, Listen, next time, yeah. I, I, if you ever do anything like that again, you want me to do it, I promise to do it, and I promise to do a good job, but you only, the only thing you have to tell people is there's going to be a guy doing comedy at the show. That's all this requires, and no one ever does it. If you prepare people for the fact that there will be comedy... Oh then they are prepared for the potential of really inappropriate things said. But you, you just said, here's the guy from I-95. I was going to have you guys like be the MC of the swearing-in ceremony in January. Ethan and Lou. Oh, baby. I was Come so on. ready for that. I was going to have my I suit know. pressed. I was going to be I looking so like I belong. Well, but the voters had different ideas. That's life. So you got to move on, right? I mean, that's what it's all about. Let, well, me, ask I'm you, good. let me ask you a question here. Do you think yeah. it might have had anything to do with uh, your benign tumor that was taken out? No, no. I, this, I, this was really a, uh, you know, all the other campaigns had the same numbers we had. In fact, the, the night before the election, uh, people were calling us to congratulate us from the other campaigns. And I'm like, well, look, you know, we actually haven't had the vote yet, so let's try and do that first before, mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm yeah. very superstitious that way. And um, this was really, you know, a group of people that nobody was tracking who, Generally, we're probably over 70 that wouldn't respond to surveys and pick up the phone, watch Fox News all day long. Right. Saw somebody on TV in January, locked in. That's who I'm voting for. And that was it. You weren't going to you weren't going to budge them or move them. So, um, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that's part of the strategy is strategy is to get up on there early. And we didn't get up till uh, I think, uh, June. We started running in May and um, it is what it is. But uh you know, look, I, I said this before, and I'm a little philosophical here, but it's true. Uh, I get it. You know, God does. God has other plans for me, and, and if all I ever am is mayor of the city of Danbury, that is pretty darn good. So I'm I'm lucky and blessed and happy and all that stuff. Uh, I'm not. I, I joke around. I'm really not bitter. I'm, I'm not crazy bitter. I, I feel bad only in the sense that there were literally thousands of people that volunteered, put in so much time. All of us put in so much time, and it just didn't happen for us. But, but you know, you got to move on. We're talking to Danbury Mayor Mark Bowton, obviously following up on the fact that he lost the uh, the, the primary and the run for uh, the governor. Uh, let's just say for a second somebody uh, wanted to vote for you. They, you know, they were with you. They were su- a supporter of yours. Their politics aligned with yours. As yeah. a voter now going forward, who would you caution them against that's still in the race? Look, uh, you know... I- I think the the state needs a change uh, of pace. Um, I think it. I would I would gravitate towards a candidate that represents the biggest change. Um, and and frankly, I know this sounds like I'm you know uh, flaking out here, but I would support uh, the guy who beat me. I mean, at least it, it's something different. Uh, and it, because if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're going to get the same result. I know so, who you'd support, but 
who would you who is a disaster? I mean, come on, you're out of this thing now. So uh, let's just be honest. Which one of the guys means the worst trouble for the state of Connecticut? I think I think Lamont's going to he's going to he's going to be problematic unless he can figure out a way to separate himself from all the special interest groups that constantly and consistently tug at the uh, Democratic governor because that's what's that's what's driving all of these uh, expenditures and, and our bankruptcy. I mean, he's just got to figure out a way to separate himself. But not alienate those people. And if you can't do that, I would not vote for him because you're going to have four years of, of Dan Malloy again. Okay. Now you, that's what I've been reading that he's a carbon copy of Malloy. It's a, it's it's a problem for him. He's got to figure out a way to be his own person. You know, kind of remember remember the sister soldier moment with uh, Bill Clinton when he turned to one of the rappers and said, "Hey, you can't say that stuff." Um, he's got to do the same similar thing to those groups of people that have just bankrupted the state. Now, you mentioned earlier in our conversation, we're talking to Danbury Mayor Mark Bowton, that, uh, you know, it's time to move on for you. What, what, what does that mean? What, what does it mean for Danbury? What, what are you going to be up to? What, what are you thinking about for Danbury? Well, I have a lot more uh, time to binge watch, uh, so that's yeah, good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, but, you know, right now um, we've got a lot of projects going. i got a lot of, th- you know, a lot of irons in the fire in terms of city business. So I'm, I still get jazzed and excited about that stuff that, I think why I would have made a good governor, right? I love this stuff. So um, I'm not making any decisions about next year until well after uh, the holidays. And um, right now, uh, you know, I'll be leading towards running for another term if the voters will have me here in Danbury and uh, go from there. But, um, uh, you know, you, you do have to kind of look at and say, all right, you know, at some point, how long am I going to be doing this? And, and what are my options? Oh, no, this? no, and, no, 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 so no. Uh, what are we talking you know, about? Um, You're a young man. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to launch a radio show in the morning. Uh, it's a, it'll be an internet show, and I, I would get three listeners at least a, a day. <laughs> um, so you're going to beat us in the radio? Real quick, that I want to talk about. Wow, you got, yeah. One is passing to Senator John McCain. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So I, I am just uh, first of all, he is one of my personal heroes. I know he. Nobody's lived a perfect life, right? Everybody's made mistakes and done things that they regret. Um, but having said all that, this guy spent seven years in a prison of war camp. Um, did never he never broke? He never bent. He couldn't lift his arms up because he had his arms broken so many times by uh, his captors. And uh, the fact that anybody out there would try to disparage his character and what he did for our country and our nation is to me absolutely repulsive. So I just want to you know send a shout out there in terms of everything he's done for all of us and and you know rest in peace for him. And then the second thing, and on a more lighter note, saw a great Showtime um, special documentary. The one on Leonard Skinner. Did you guys see that yet? No, not yet. No. no. Talk to me. Oh, my. It's awesome. So you do know they named the band after their gym teacher, right? Come on. Who are you talking to here? I mean, who do you think you are talking to when you share information Clearly like that Clearly not us? a comedian. Because uh, that's <laughs> an issue. But. You're asking us if we know that piece of rock and roll trivia? Go ahead. Yeah, but anyways, uh, it just it puts the whole band together. It just explains how everything. And Ed King just died recently, by the way, who was one of the gu- original guitarists. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a great two-hour special. But at the end, they talk about the plane crash. And what I found the most fascinating was, you know, people survived that crash. Obviously, some people didn't. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the gentlemen that was in the plane, one of the band members, said, "You know, going down as we're dropping nine thousand feet." Nobody said a word. Nobody screamed. Nobody panicked. Nobody flipped out. You know, people were praying, but it wasn't what you thought it would be. He goes, it was the most, uh, you know, crazy in a way thing that I ever experienced. And it, obviously then we hit the trees and hit the ground. But um, it, it just, you have to watch it. It's really well done. I'll definitely check it out. I want to go back to, I don't want to just skip over what you said about uh, Senator McCain because I couldn't yeah. agree with you more. Uh, we We talked about it briefly on the show because I don't, I don't feel like there was a lot to say. We wanted to say a respectful thing. I, too, was a huge fan of his, uh, not only as a human being, but a politician. And uh, what I basically said was, anybody can second-guess a person's political decisions, but you can't second-guess the life that this guy led uh, in general, number one, or away from politics. Uh, You know, uh, I've met him four times. Uh, each time he was a gentleman, twice in his office in Washington, D.C., we had a common interest in, obviously, immigration affairs. And so he had read a bunch of stuff and wanted to meet me and talk about some ideas. 
Um, and he actually put those ideas forward as pieces of legislation back in the late 2000s. It didn't make it far, but the bottom line is that a complete gentleman, but uh, just uh, a fascinating person. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just I find it uh, bizarre that people question his loyalty to America because he maybe doesn't agree with them about a particular issue or idea after everything he's, you know, been through and what he's done. Um, so it, it's just weird. He wrote a, a great book um, with his best friend, Rick Davis, It's called Faith of Our Fathers. I would recommend it for somebody over the weekend if they want to read a great book over Labor Day weekend. And um, I, I just thought the world of the guy. He just and, and if you really do some traveling, you go to Pensacola, Florida, the Pensacola Naval Air Station has a great uh, Naval Air Station Museum. It's free of charge. And in there, they have a mock-up of his a cell where he was kept in North Vietnam in the Hanoi Hills, wow. uh, which you can visit. And it's, it's an incredibly well done museum. Um, and that's where he did his naval air training, obviously. So I don't know. I, I just I don't get these times when people think it's funny to, to pick on somebody that uh, uh, literally sacrificed everything for us. Right. And, uh, I wish you rest in peace. There you go. Danbury Mayor Mark Bat. We ran a little long with you today, but it's understandable. We had a lot to cover. And, uh, you know, while I'm sad that you lost, uh, I'm, you know, part of me is happy that, uh, you know, you and I could still go golfing and sit around and talk about Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, yeah. One other thing, by the way. One of our comments made it into a last minute mailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys asked me in April of 2016. Uh, if I was going to vote for the president, for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And remember, at that time, I was not supporting Trump. I was supporting somebody else. Yeah. And I said I would I would rather put, pick Lynn out of my navel. <laughs> and there, there on the mailer was a big stomach with somebody picking a piece of <laughs> <laughs> Nice. That's awesome. All right. I think, you did, I think you guys did warn me about that. You uh, better watch what you say on here. <laughs> we did. We did. Before it was even like a reality. All right. Great, Mark. We'll talk to you again okay. next week. We appreciate the time. Thanks, Ozark Mark. Season 2 on Netflix, by the way, tomorrow. We're excited about that, you both you and I. All right, man. Okay, peace. Catch Later. you next week. Bye-bye. There you go. 833. This portion of the show is brought to you by JCPenney.